Ooh. I'm on my DSLR today. Ooh, fancy schmancy. Hello and welcome to this video. Barefoot science explained. What if I told you you'd been running wrong your entire life? What if I told you this other way of running could prevent the dreaded oh, runner's knee. Ah. For our whole lives, we've had it drilled into us that it's absolutely imperative to wear proper running shoes at a massive blow to the budget, all just to cushion, support, and protect your precious feet. Running shoes are supposed to support our ankles and reduce the risk of injury. But what if I told you that actually running shoes weren't even invented until the 1970s? Finding this out myself, I had many unanswered questions and I thought that maybe other people might be interested in this too. How did we survive as a species up until now without shoes? And why did we apparently evolve such poorly designed feet that needed these supports and it wasn't possible to just run? Or maybe we have evolved an inbuilt system that will do this all for us, almost as if we were born to run. So I've actually decided to try it out myself and see whether my feet are designed to run. And there's a lot of information now on barefoot running, it's a bit of a trend. So I thought I'd try it out for myself. And you can see in my previous video, I did five days of barefoot running and I was told I didn't show the shoes that I was wearing. So these are the shoes that I wore in my previous video. If you wanna go along and watch that, then you can. Um, but these are my Vivos. They're the like Primus knit. They're sort of like the generic ones. I love them. And I've pretty much worn them to death even since that video. And I can tell you a bit about what I thought. I'm a science-minded person. I My degree is physics and I really enjoy doing research and things like that. So I decided to do a bit of research into barefoot running myself and see what I could find and what people were saying about it and was there any backing behind it and things like that. And it has gained a lot of popularity recently due to a study done by Dr. Daniel Lieberman, which was published in Nature in 2010, in which they compared the collision forces for feet hitting the ground for runners with and without shoes while landing on their heel or their forefoot, which I briefly mentioned in my previous video. And in that study, they found that even on hard surfaces, barefoot runners who forefoot strike generate smaller collision forces than shod rear foot strikers. By the way, shod means you have shoes on. Um, I, I thought it meant something else, but it doesn't. Due to a more plantiplex foot, which means it means that your toes more pointed, at landing and more ankle compliance during impact, decreasing the effective mass of the body that collides with the ground. Forefoot and midfoot strike gates were probably more common when humans ran barefoot or in minimal shoes and may protect the feet and lower limbs from some of the impact related injuries now experienced by a high percentage of runners. This statement was backed up by the so called Lieberman curves. I presume I'm saying that right. And they actually found that it's not the overall force which causes injury, but rather how quickly the force is applied, otherwise known as the loading rate. And here you can see a double peak, which Lieberman found was only to be present for heel strikers. Lieberman accounted for this by hypothesizing that the initial steep peak was caused by the heel hitting the floor. And this is called the impact transient. So you can see how steep it is, and that is what causes the injury, whereas for barefoot runners, forefoot strikers, they've got a more gradual increase. For barefoot running, they found that the runners were more likely to forefoot strike and therefore the loading was less, approximately half. The ankle basically bends due to the reaction force, so unlike in heel strikers, the kinetic energy is theoretically converted rather than lost, and this decreases the effective mass, which is the, um, the mass which it, the body or the object or the human seems to have when reacting to the forces, which decreases the force on the body and therefore theoretically reduces the likelihood of injury. They also found that 
shoes did protect the feet for rear foot strikers however this just like lessened the problem which they found actually to be absent in barefoot strikers which is absolutely massive that these shoes are preventing injury for something which wouldn't be a problem if these shoes didn't exist madness and this makes sense when we think about evolution it makes sense that we would evolve, have evolved strong arches which act basically as like a, a spring when forefoot striking. So in conclusion, Lieberman also notes shoes limit proprioception and it encourages heel striking. That basically means that if you're wearing shoes, wear good ones, forefoot striking seems to be the better option. He also mentions that the arch supports can lead to weak foot muscles which increases pronation which is the inward rolling of your feet and that is a massive cause of injury. He does state right at the end of the paper that controlled tests are needed to be able to confirm or deny whether the reduced injury rates are actually present because the current evidence is actually only anecdotal which is really important and these Lieberman curves were probably the biggest pro barefoot piece of evidence until a new study suggested that perhaps the graphs have been interpreted wrong so this was I'm just gonna read from here but Peter Weyand his biomechanics group at SMU published an article in the Journal of Applied Physiology mm -hmm. They used a two mass model to successfully predict the curves and said that the force always consists of two components. A small spike due to the, the foot and the lower leg hitting the ground and then a larger spike due to the rest of the body. The overall force is therefore a sum of the two components. By using this model you can accurately construct the Lieberman curves. An interesting piece of evidence that they found was that sprinters, despite forefoot striking, still had this initial steep peak, which implied that the mini spike is actually just a function of how quickly you're applying the force to the ground. And their conclusion to explain this was that in forefoot running, the Achilles basically acts as a shock absorber, basically just masking that first initial steep curve. So it doesn't mean that it's not there, it's just been masked and makes it appear as if it's absent. And they concluded that we're basically just automatically going to adjust. So either your shoe or your biomechanics change the loading rate. And this study was massive because the two mass models successfully predicted the ground, vertical ground reaction force time patterns across four footwear conditions. Now, these are the two main studies that I found on barefoot running, and I'm, I'm sure I probably missed some, but I think it'd be very interesting to conduct a controlled experiment on the sort of long-term effects of barefoot running versus running in shoes and see what the effects of injury were in reality. So what's the practical takeaway here? So as with everything, some people agree, some people don't agree, there's always going to be these different camps of people and it basically just sounds as if you, your body will adjust but we're not really sure what, as I said, the long-term impacts of that are. My personal viewpoint is that whilst it's it best normally to do things as naturally as possible. We have developed things in our lives like penicillin or toothbrushes which do positively impact, in my opinion, I don't know about everyone else, benefit our lives and we haven't developed ways of dealing with that so maybe shoes are another one of those sort of inventions but whilst the evidence for and against is somewhat limited I think it would be smart to give it a go and basically just as always listen to your body and do what's best for you. If you get really injured, then don't do it and maybe start slowly, build it up and see whether you like it. And basically you've just got to do whatever works for you. And I'm sorry that that's a really bad conclusion, but I thought it'd be interesting to present the information that I found to you and show you what I found out. So I filmed this Science Explained video yesterday. I didn't really put in too much about what my opinion was on the science. And I have watched Tony Riddle's YouTube video that he did with Rick Roll. Actually, I think it's Rick Roll's, or Rich, I don't know how to say his name, can't remember. They did a YouTube video which explained a little bit about the science behind it. And in my previous video, I linked that, so um, you can see that there. But basically, I wanted to talk about what my opinion was, and I felt like I couldn't do that without 
scientific literature to back it up. So this is purely anecdotal. I don't know if that's the right word. It's also a little bit taken from the Lieberman study. This isn't really backed up anymore because the uh, SMU study sort of debunked it to a certain extent. Bear with me. So as humans, we are not designed to sit in chairs. In evolutionary perspective, we have been on chairs for a very small fraction of our time on Earth. Sitting in a chair compresses your hip flexors and it promotes you to sit in a very C-shaped way. Basically causes you to be quite round-shouldered and that causes your centre of mass to be further forward. Now if this, your centre of mass is further forward, in order to stay balanced and keep your centre of mass, when you run, you need to reach your knee up quite high and reach your leg further forward. And that means that you have to heel strike the ground. That is super strenuous because then all of the force is then riding up through your leg if you imagine an uh, impact like this and the force is going straight up, that's just like a recipe for injury basically. It's all in your quads, so then you become very, very quad dominant and that just leads to more instability, which means that it's even harder to sit up straight and even harder to run correctly. However, if, you're, if you've got correct posture, your centre of mass is all in line. So then when you run, you're basically falling and you, your hip, foot hits the ground directly underneath you and then you use your hamstrings to pull your legs up the back and that means that the force is then travelling throughout your entire body rather than just your feet and your ankles. Everything interlinks doesn't it? So like if you've got a C-shaped spine, you're going to run wrong. You need to fix your posture and one way of doing that is by wearing shoes that do promote full foot strike. If you run better, then maybe you'll sit better. It makes sense in terms of your centre of mass that I was just thought I'd talk about the reasons why I thought that it, from an evolutionary perspective and a biomechanical perspective, it made sense to try and four foot run because that's more natural. And yeah, maybe in the SMU study they found that the force was actually the same, but it's like Maybe the force is the same, but the force is on a different part of your body. It's very focused in your ankle rather than using a whole body as a shock absorber. Tony actually mentions that you should therefore be leaning further forward so that if you're forefoot striking, then just spring off your toes rather than having to come down to go back up which is basically just a calf raise, which is why I was getting really bad calf pains because my foot was hitting the ground on the forefoot I was then putting my heel down because I wasn't running quite fast enough for that stance and then coming back up whereas really I should have been leaning further forward and then just springing off like this or landing with a flat foot and then springing off but definitely not heel striking so that the force is up here we don't want that it's really hard to demonstrate with my hands but yeah I thought I'd just chime in and even though I don't necessarily have any studies and literature that's like hey this is true um, apart from a little bit in the Lieberman study, which you can read if you fancy. If this sparks your interest, you can go and look at it for yourself, and that's what I think, so yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and happy running! And I will see you very, very soon with another video. I'm really enjoying presenting my scientific findings, but I kind of think I want to do it in Oh, I've just realised you can see me in the mirror. Hi, you can see me reading from my laptop. Oops. But I think I prefer doing it in more of a vlog style. So uh, for with this one, I split up the science versus my experience. But I think I might merge them together next time. But let me know what you think, what you prefer. I'm just going to keep trying things because I'm having a lot of fun. I've got a lot of time at the moment. And it's a while till I go back to uni. So see you very soon. Bye.